hope your day is going well. Today's presentation is concerning cloud computing and capacity management. And it's from a lot of um, information that um, many individuals within Metron have um, put together on how we um, or the industry can look at both of these two, in some cases we call challenges um, with cloud computing, but how you can fit with um, capacity management and how you can move forward. With our agenda today, I'm going to talk about um, just setting a, a level set of what is cloud computing. Talk about from a general standpoint and, and then moving into more details about what is capacity management. Then we're going to spend some time on cloud capacity management challenges, how they how that's going to affect you within your enterprise as you move more towards that IT type of a model. Then we're going to talk about application transaction management. Now that's something that has been garnering um, a lot of um, emphasis from organizations and um, companies out there in being able to understand and look at what the end user experience is for cloud computing activities that are going on within the enterprise. <clears throat> We're going to spend a minute about uh, reporting and forecasting, and then we're going to come up with a summary of the event. What is cloud computing? Everyone has different terms, but what, we, what I've come up with is three areas which I think puts it into a box that everyone can put their hands on and look and um, be able to discuss. It's an on-demand self-service. The whole emphasis behind the cloud computing is to allow individual users to provision resources as they need um, as necessary. Now those resources need to be able to uh, be created dynamically um, without much input from uh, the system staff. So that's pretty much one of the terms or one of the definitions that uh, we use for on-demand uh, for cloud computing. Resource pooling. With cloud computing, many times um, it's based upon virtualization. The virtualization platforms are not just VMware. It could be any of the Unix virtualization platforms, and it may even encompass some of the uh, ZOS virtualization technology out there, depending on the needs of the organization. And what resource pooling allows you to do is to combine your physical resources, use them in a virtualized manner, and allow multiple people to use that physical resource at the same time. And then rapid elasticity. That is where you need to be able to grow and shrink that, that cloud environment or that um, virtualized environment that you have out there very quickly. Um, being able to say that um, we need to add additional resources, but it's going to take two days, is not going to buy it anymore. Uh, people are looking for um, those additional resources, sometimes within a day, uh, sometimes within hours. And that depends on what your service level of objectives are and the service level agreements are that you um, contract with your users, um, whether you're a independent provider or you're running a cloud providing service within your organization. So again, it's just the ability to quickly purchase any of those resources um, at any time. Again, part of cloud computing is and we're going to go into this in a little bit more detail, but this gives you a general picture of it. You have the public external cloud, things like Google, uh, Amazon. Uh, you could go out and actually do and create a um, or provision yourself. An individual user can provision cloud services. <clears throat> you have the private or the internal cloud. Um, that's housed or controlled um, by the organization's IT staff. So you have a lot of security on there. 
Now, one of the things that cloud computing allows you to do is many times the independent private or internal private cloud may not have the resources to handle a, a um, increase in activity. So what many organizations have done is they have set up agreements with the public cloud environments to create a, a landing place that if they need additional resources, they can go to. Um, that gives them some level of security because they've already negotiated a lot of these uh, normal types of activities or normal types of um, objectives out there. Um, so it gives them a lot of um, throughput and a lot of quick analysis and the rep, re, rapid elasticity. But again, it's the secured environment, and that's called the hybrid cloud. As I was just saying, you've got the four major deployment models out there. Uh, you've got the public, the private, which we talked about. A number of organizations um, are using what they call the community cloud. And when the community cloud allows um, maybe people of the same industry, uh, sleep labs, doctor's offices, uh, accounting offices, those types of things that want to have this type of cloud environment, but each individual on their own is not large enough to create and to manage that. So they come together as a collective, um, set up this internal cloud community environment, set up how they're going to manage it, the security of it, and those types of things. So um, that's becoming, for small businesses, in a lot of cases, that's um, becoming really popular. Now, the, again, the community clouds can be either housed by one of the providers or one of the companies, or it can be housed by um, a third-party provider. And then, as I said, we have the hybrid cloud out there. With this, um, the primary emphasis for many organizations these days um, is the private and the hybrid cloud. Uh, the private because it gives them the security. The hybrid, it gives them the security, but it gives them the rapid elasticity that they can go out and acquire additional resources if necessary at any particular time. Now we talked about deployment models, but there's also service models out there, the types of services that you are seeing in the cloud computing um, ecosystem, uh, the new, uh, one of the new terms that a lot of people are using. Um, you've got the hardware or the infrastructure as a service. You give you the pla they give you the, the physical, the bare metal that you can go out and use and run your particular um, applications on. A platform as a service, maybe, you know, some type of platform. Could be a client server platform that encompasses maybe Windows servers, uh, Oracle, and um, maybe some connection back to a mainframe if necessary. So it gives you platform as a service. You have software as a service. Um, that's what a lot of people are using the cloud for. So you have things such as salesforce.com. Um, a lot of the Google services are software as a service. You're doing that. And it's a very close tie-in with application as a service. So you can use those. A lot of people think of those two as one and the same. At VMworld this year, one of the new service offerings or service models that has been coming into as a service. So you're doing the monitoring as a service and being able to show that and be able to see that as you move forward. And it's all based upon based and subscription-based modeling out there. And this is just a little picture here just showing you some of the major um, public cloud applications that are out there. As I said, you've got Amazon, you've got MapQuest, uh, Salesforce, and I'll Google and those types of things. 